Hello folks, fellow YouTubers and friends. Uh, we've uh, tweaked out the uh, vertical foliated escapement on the uh, two-phase oscillator, the TSO, and are getting ready to uh, mount the uh, work bar, or uh, work bars, to the uh, escapement and the pendulum uh, arms. Uh, what I want to do with this video right now is that lately I've seen quite a few videos of other people that are making uh, TSOs uh, in an attempt to prove or disprove its over unity. Uh, at this point, uh, I am fully convinced it is over unity. Uh, I just haven't actually proved it beyond any shadow of a doubt. However, I have to me. Like I said once before, I am 99.9999% positive it is over unity. There's too many things I have done that has showed it. Uh, just haphazardly building, I have built it to produce 50% uh, more energy out than in. Uh, tweaking that out, I've got it up to uh, 3.4, 3.5 times uh, energy out as put in. Uh, the, Bigger TSO that I have built outside, uh, I have not made a video of it since we bumped it from a 230 pound pendulum to a 512 pound pendulum. However, 512 pounds without actual physical tests is showing signs of actually 1500%. That's 15 times more energy out than in. Haven't proved it yet. Uh, had someone say, uh, ask me, well, several people uh, lately in the past six or eight months, I've had about three different comments about uh, Boomer. Uh, you spent so much time, so much money, so many years working on this. How are you going to feel? You're going to feel like a dumbass, a dipshit, if you eventually prove that it's not over you. No, I'm not. Think about it. A gasoline motor, a diesel motor, an electric motor, they are not over unity. They are less than unity. They're less than 100%. If, and I say that with capital letters and quotation marks because I don't believe so, I believe it is, but if it is not, think about it. You've seen my videos driving it with weights. You've seen my videos proving it can't put out power. It can pump water, it can turn a generator, it can grind grain. It is not a generator, it is not a water pump, it is a motor. It is a source of power. If it is not over unity, think about in the third world countries where they take young teenagers, uh, a man's got three kids, one's a little boy, one's a, two, two of them are little girls, and they're growing rice. Well, they're taking turns. One of them is walking on a treadmill, pumping water into the rice field, while the other two out planting uh, rice uh, seedlings. And then when the one get pumping the water gets tired, it goes out plants rice seedlings, and another one takes over. And they're doing this 8, 10, 12 hours a day. Why not build a TSO that will pump water? Put their bed, instead of the weights that I use on mine, lead bars, put their bed in there and let the kids sleep on it at night. The kids are sleeping at night and pumping water into the rice field. Give me a break. Feel like a fool if it's not over your neck? Heck no. I would say hell no, but you know, it's how I do. I mean, if it's not, it still has uses beyond the imagination. It can it can change the life lifestyles of thousands of people. It is so simple to build. That's why I'm making this video. Because there's so many people out there, I mean hundreds of them, that are playing with this thing and they're haphazard building it. They don't really and truly understand what it is they're doing. So what I'm going to do is go through a few points here and I hope you people will not get bored and please bear with me. Alright. Uh, number one, let's uh, Draw the TSO and go over the fine points so we all know what we're talking about. First off, you have a pendulum. Then you have the pendulum arm. You have the pivot point of the pendulum. Then you have the work transfer bar. 
okay? The, this is a power transfer bar, and you have a pivot point on it, okay? Then you have your lift side of your power transfer bar coming down. You call these the lift bars. Then you have your, I like to call it a transverse lever, because most people, you have a load, you have a lever, and you have a fulcrum, and you push down. Okay, this is a lever. However, if you do it the opposite, and you put your fulcrum here, and your load here, then you lift here, rather than push down, and it picks your load up. Think about the difference between a transverse lever and an actual lever. The lever you push down, okay? With a transverse lever, you lift up. But, with the lever, you take this distance, divide it into this distance, and that is your power ratio. For example, if this is one foot and this is three foot, then you have a three to one ratio. With the transverse lever, it's shorter and gives you the same ratio. If this is one foot and the entire lever is three foot, not four, your ratio is still three to one. Duh. So your lever is shorter in a transverse lever but giving you the same ratio. Now, let's do this, just for the sake of argument, okay? Let's compound that transverse lever because the, TS, the TSO picks up weight because of its design. It actually lifts weight. So if you have a transverse lever, come down here, do it short, and let's just say it's one foot, and you go to the center, and you attach it to this part right here, and you attach it, okay, then you have a two to one ratio. Now you come out here, this is one foot, so you, now you come down and you come out two feet, and this part connects here. You still have a two to one ratio, but you're only, if you're picking up with 100 pounds here, you have a 50 pound force here, two to one ratio. Here, you have a two to one ratio, but you only have a 50 pound force here, so you have a 25 pound force here. Okay, we do it one more time. We come out here, this is two foot, so now we come out four feet. Okay, so we're picking up 12 and a half pounds. But, each time you cut the weight, you double the distance. So, if you pick this up one inch, this is going to come up two inches. You pick this up two inches, this is going to come up four. You pick this up four, this is going to come up eight. So consequently, eight times twelve and a half, if you figure it up, it's going to come out to a one hundred. So you get one hundred inch pounds. This is coming up one inch. It's the same thing. It's just coming up eight inches. Eight inches, twelve and a half pounds, 100 inch pounds. It's the same force, it's just traveling a greater distance, giving you more time to work. That's why when you figure out how much weight you need, how far you need to move it, that's why you need to figure the length of your pendulum. It has to be measured to give you the time. The longer the pendulum arm, the more swing, the more time it takes between actual pulls, giving your lifted weight time to come down and actually do work okay i mean so this is the transverse multi-stage compound lever that we intend to build for this new tso but when we build it we're going to build it strong enough that once we've proven that it does or does not work if it does then we're going to take it out and put it on the larger tso outside okay so i hope everybody understands that now let me go over to, now, what I'm going to discuss now is mainly, and um, people that are not building a TSO, uh, this could still be interesting, so please bear with me. Those that are actually building a TSO are losing the concept of the pendulum swing. Now, when the pendulum comes down, at this point, at, at 5 to 8 degrees before bottom dead center, it's when you get up, it's pulling all the time. But that's where it really starts, is power. And the maximum power is at bottom dead center. Now, as it changes from coming down to going up, it's still 
at peak power at five to eight degrees to this side. So you've got a ten a ten to sixteen degree window of pure power. Now as it comes up, it's slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. The biggest mistake most people are doing is they're not swinging it to a full 90 degrees above bottom dead center. Because if you say, swing it out here, for example, at 45 degrees, it pulls down. And you can see I drew this on a downward angle. Now all of a sudden it's got, it, it stops, it has no weight. Therefore, the weight of over here can pull down and lift this up. But if it's down here, it's lifting it up. But you're getting resistance because it's got to actually pull it back. It's not lifting it, but it's pulling back and in so actually lifting it a minor degree. When you swing the pendulum at a full 90 degrees, at that point, when it stops, it has no weight whatsoever on this point. The only weight on this point is half of the pendulum arm because you take any straight bar, weighs five pounds, and you balance it here, and balance it here on the two ends, it's going, you're going to have two and a half pounds on both ends. So whatever the bar weighs, half of that is the only resistance keeping this from going up. That's the only resistance. Now, that's mistake number one that most people making a, a two-stage oscillator make. All right? Mistake number two. Uh, let me do away with this. Mistake number two. They don't put enough ratio of difference between the pivot point of the work bar, the look, uh, power transfer bar, and the pendulum. Uh, I've even seen some people go a one-to-one. -one. <laughs> that is almost ridiculous. Here's the thing that a lot of people really don't get this. This pivot point right here, it's moving up and down. The power drained from the pendulum to return is exponential. For example, if you let it come down and it takes 10 inch pounds to maintain, if you let it come down one inch and it takes 10 inch pounds to maintain the swing, if you let it come down a half an inch, then you would think that it will only take five pounds. No, it takes less. When you cut the distance, this moves down in half you cut the power needed by 60 to 65 percent. So therefore the slightest movement here requires the less movement you get is way less power input. Now the thing is when it comes down the 100 pound pendulum swinging at uh, say roughly four or five feet is going to weigh uh, it's going to not weigh, but it's forced pulling down. It's going to be somewhere around 1.63 times its weight. At uh, a six and a half foot, it's going to be 2.73 to 78 times its physical weight. Let this move an eighth of an inch with a 50, 60 pound pendulum at four feet, you're going to need roughly 0.8 pounds moving for a distance of one and a quarter to one and a half inches to maintain the swing. That's what your input would be. If you let it move one sixteenth of an inch, then you're not even going to need 0.4 pounds. You're going to probably need somewhere around 0.3 pounds moving an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half. That's a whole lot less energy input, yet your actual physical poundage of pull, your force, will be the same traveling at a lesser distance. That's why you want a greater deal in here. Now, you don't want one foot and eight foot. Think about this. You take a, that's a nine foot bar. You take a nine foot bar and we're talking a real TSO here. We're not talking four or five pounds, okay? My pendulum outside weighs 515 pounds. When it comes down, it comes down with a force of almost 1,400 pounds. When you plot 1,400 pounds here, uh, one foot here and eight foot here, this rod, unless you've got inch thick steel, eight inches wide, it's going to bend. And any bending is lost power. 
Therefore, what you want to do is take the pendulum and make this 6 inches and this 18. So that you've got a 3 to 1 ratio. Now you take an 18 inch rod of whatever, the same width, I mean same size rod, but the difference is 18 inches or 8 foot. It's not going to bend as much, so you're not going to get as much lost power. And that's why you come down and you do the multi-stage transverse lever. That way you can get the distance of travel, you cut your actual weight down that you're lifting, but you lift it for a higher distance, but you're getting the same force. And you apply it properly. When you're building a TSO, you have to take everything into consideration. You don't want any flex here. You don't want any flex here. You don't want any flex anywhere. Shorten it up and compound it. You use a much smaller material, it doesn't flex, and you can compound everything out. And trust me, you can do just as much work at 12 and a half pounds moving 8 inches as you can 100 pounds moving 1 inch. It's just if you need more time to do it, therefore you just simply build your pendulum longer. In building your pendulum longer, because it's traveling a greater distance, it's gaining speed, momentum, and weight is force. The faster the same weight travels, the more force it has to pull down. It takes longer to travel, but it gains more force than the length of time it takes. You double the length of the pendulum, you multiply the force of that pendulum by 2.7. You double the pendulum, you multiply the time by exactly two. So the longer you make your pendulum, the more power you get per time, per second. And the thing is, power without time is nothing. Time without power is nothing. I mean, think about it. So we've gone over some of the finer points. If anybody got any questions or wants me to go into more detail, uh, Say so, and I'll, I'll try. See, see if I can explain this a little bit better. Okay? Uh, I hope I didn't bore anybody, but uh, I thought I needed to say that for some of the people out there. Some of them are really smart, intelligent people, and they're doing a great job, but they're making some of the main big mistakes that I made over the years, and all I'm doing is trying to keep them from making the same mistakes or correct them if they already have. Okay? Thanks, folks. Appreciate it.